What's up people of the world? Um, today I'm just going to quickly show you how to replace the bearings in a Bontrager rapid drive rear hub. Um, if you'll notice here the hub says 54 tooth but the ratchet ring in all Bontrager rapid drive hubs are the same. It's just 54 tooth will mean the free hub on this bike will have three prawls and if it says 108 it'll have six prawls. So that just refers to if you've got a rapid drive 54 or 108 that just refers to your um, pro count so first thing first i'm going to take off the cassette okay now yeah once again on the free up you can see 54 2 so that that just like tells you this free up should have three pros on but again it is up it is upgradable so you can order the springs and pros separately from Bontrager to upgrade it to a 108 so we're just going to pull this off and show you the underside So see, here's the three prawls, and you can see this free hub has taken some damage in the past. But here's the three other slots for if you'd want to upgrade it to a 108 hub. Okay, now I'm gonna take out the prawls and clean everything off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, now yeah, you can see the three prawls a bit better, and you can also see the other gaps where an another three prawls can go in. And yeah, you can see some damage from where the prawl might have been incorrectly installed or the free hub wasn't seated all the way w when the wheel was put back and then obviously that caused some damage okay i'm going to remove the prawls and springs now um just take note under these prawls there are three little springs that are super tiny and you really don't want to lose those so there's one prawl now, I usually do this with a Stanley blade because it's easy and you don't tend to lose the spring. There you can see one. There's a second pro. Second spring. Uh, third pro. Third spring. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to clean this up and whack out the bearings. I'm not going to show you how to remove the bearings because I feel if you're going to be doing this, then you really should know how to do that yourself by now. Um, just take note, the, the spacing of the bearings is there's two right here at the end um, where it will meet the hub shell. And then there's one here on the far outboard side. So get those bearings out, get the free hub clean, and then we'll go from there. Okay, now on the main hub shell, you're gonna do basically a similar thing, and it's just removing these two bearings. I'm not gonna show you that, because obviously I expect you to be able to do this now by yourself. Uh, the way I do it is just whack this axle from this side, a few good times with a rubber hammer, and the non-drive side bearing will pop out. Then put the axle back and hit it from the other side and the drive side bearing will come out. Okay, we'll get back to you when we've got our hub shell clean and ready to put back. Okay, so here we have the free hub stripped down. Everything's clean now. The sleeve in between the bearings of the free hub, the axle, end caps, the prawls, the springs. Here are our old bearings. Um, Inside this thing is like nice and clean now, ready to fit the new bearings and yeah, it's just looking good again. Um, this damage is nasty, but it's not it's not to a point where the free hub will be unusable. So I'll just continue doing the service, get the new bearings in, and then this thing will be ready to roll again. Same thing with our main hub shell. Everything's been cleaned out, the bearing races are clean, and we're ready to put back the new bearings. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using to press back the bearings into the hub. And I'd always recommend you use the best possible tool at your disposal in order to avoid damaging your hubs in any way. Because pressing a bearing in skew can really cause some havoc. Okay, so for this job you're going to need uh, five bearings. Two 6903s for the main hub shell and then three 6803s for the free hub. This won't matter if you have an XD, um, HG or microspline free hub. All of them take the same bearings. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna start taking a 3017 race, fitting it into my bearing and then putting it on the press. Okay, now on the wheel, on the brake side, I fitted a 6806 spacer because it sits nicely in this gap. And then on the other side, I've got the, ra the race, the press and the bearing in there ready to go. You'll see I'm pressing the drive side first and I'll explain why now. So just slowly and methodically start pressing it in. And then when you suddenly feel a ramp up in the torque, that means it's in the bearing seat and you can stop and back off. There we reach it now, so now we're going to back off again. Okay, you'll see now when we press the axle through why we did the drive side first. So the axle, when it's seated back, um, hear that knock. That's when it's all the way in. When it's seated back, there's still this long extension on the um, axle and that's for the free up or where the free up is going to sit. So right now, when I take uh, our old bear or the other bearing, we can't get it over the axle because this race can't fit over the axle. So I'll show you now what we're going to do on the brake side. Okay, so now the problem here is we just have this little bit of axle extension. So here's our new bearing, we're going to put it on an old bearing and then we're going to tap it in lightly with a hammer. Unfortunately we can't press this side because our races don't fit over this internal axle. So this is where it gets a little weird. Okay, you'll see our bearing is seated all the way inside now. So the way we did that, which is a little unconventional unfortunately because our tool can't fit over, is we fitted an old bearing, the old bearing that came out of here. We fitted it over and just lightly knocked it in with a hammer. The, if you're going to do this in that way, just always make sure you have something in between the new bearing and whatever you're hitting. Because never hit a new bearing because you can damage the races and that's obviously going to create problems for you down the line. Okay, here we have a free up up now. We have some, a bit large bearing, press, bearing race to press against here. And we have our first 6803 uh, on the press ready to go in. The free hub is very easy and it's a lot less complicated than doing the main hub with that axle story. So just again, slowly and methodically go in. And when there's suddenly a lot of torque on the press handle or whatever you're using, then you know the bearing is seated all the way. Keep in mind that this bearing is going to go very deep because there sits two bearings at that point in the free up. So we'll press the other one on top of it now. Okay, so we have the two um, inboard bearings in the free up now. The most important thing before we press the last bearing is to remember to put in this little sleeve before you do that. Uh, just literally sits in there and then the other bearing will sit in this race and then we're done. Okay, here we are. Uh, bearings in the free hub, that little space is inside. It can obviously move a little bit. That's intentional in the design, so don't worry about that. Uh, bearings on the other side are in, all in straight. Hub shell bearings are in. So now I'm just quickly gonna put back the prawls and the springs, just grease them a little bit. Then we'll put it back on the wheel and we'll be ready to go. Okay, now the free hub's back together, proles are back in place, lightly greased, no stiction or anything, everything's running smooth, bearings are smooth, spacers nice and seated, now we can get the wheel back together. Okay, now I've greased the ratcheting ring and now we're just going to press on the free hub and align that little sleeve inside. It may not press on the first time, you may need to press the proles in a little bit just just to get them started on the ratchet ring just like that now you can hear the free up isn't as loud as it normally would be um, just because we everything's clean and greased now 
So that'll get progressively louder as the grease starts to distribute. So now just your end caps and then you're done.